San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this hour, millions of Americans lining up for a Pfizer booster shot as the CDC focuses on the unvaccinated. The efforts now underway. Plus, the latest involving a crash that killed three people over the weekend. Who police say the suspected drunk driver was? It was a beautiful weekend across South Texas, but rain is in the forecast. How much and when? We'll talk to Mike in just a sec. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, September 27th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a wonderful weekend and we're getting the best of both worlds. We had nice weather this weekend and now looking for rain. I agree 100%. It's not bad out there this morning. You can feel a little bit more humidity when you step just, outside. Just slightly, but not I, terrible. I smell it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and the weekend, yeah, couldn't have been better for the uh, the race for the cure on Saturday. Yeah. Just to sit outside. Head for the cure. Head for the gear. Yes, Sorry, but it was head. good. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, just to sit outside in the mornings with low humidity and it was beautiful all day long. And yeah, this morning it's kind of back and, a little bit. And Steph won her age group. My age oh, group. You did. Yes, I did. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Yes. I was excited. You did. And the former case adder Charles Gonzalez won his group as well. Well, actually, he won the Masters. Did he really? Yes. Well, there he, you go. He came in overall. See, so yeah. there's hope for us after all, Mike goes <laughs> Not for us. Anyway, back to the rain chances uh, around here. Uh, we're just going to have a lot of clouds hanging around today and temperatures. We are at 70 right now, uh, mid 60s in parts of the hill country there. Comfort is the, the cool spot, kind of the, the oddball, if you will, at 59 degrees. And then these numbers are definitely up. Last week, you know, at one point they had gotten down into the low 40s and 50s and behind that front. It was nice over the weekend and now it's not oppressively humid, but we've gotten above 60. So that's where you start to, in this case, I mean, kind of smell the humidity a little bit more, and it's going to be sticking around definitely throughout the rest of the week. Ragweed is on the moderate side. Mold, fall elm are both on the low side, and this morning, We'll drop down maybe a couple of more degrees here and there. Temperatures won't move all that much just because of the cloud cover and some of that extra humidity out there. And then a high temperature later on today, 90. Partly sunny skies, so sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds. We're not looking at any rain today, nor I don't think tonight. But tomorrow we'll see a few of them developing a few showers and thunderstorms throughout the day. And then more, especially the latter half of the week. Could be some fairly decent rain. As a matter of fact, in some cases, there may be some occasions where there's uh, too much rain, some heavy downpours can be expected. How long will that last? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. There are new developments this morning involving a deadly crash over the weekend. A member of law enforcement is one of three people killed after police say a suspected drunk driver sped through a west side intersection yesterday morning. The medical center health system in Odessa shared this picture online. Sergeant Daniel Valenzuela Jr. served with the system and the Ector County Hospital District Police Department. 37-year-old, his 69-year-old father, Daniel Valenzuela Sr. and 84-year-old grandmother, Andrea Uvale, were also killed in that crash yesterday morning. A fourth person in the vehicle remains hospitalized this morning. Police say the 17-year-old suspect, Elijah Jays Montalvo, sped through that intersection of Culebra and 1604 before hitting a car and Valenzuela and his family were in. Investigators said he was suspected of drinking before that crash. The team was taken to the hospital to be evaluated. Now to the latest San Antonio police have arrested this man in connection to a bank robbery on Friday. According to SAPD, 33 year old Raul Sandoval was taken into custody for robbing a bank off Louis Pasteur in the medical center area. He was found the same day with what police believe is evidence from the robbery. Sandoval was booked into the Bear County Jail on a robbery charge. His bond was set at $60,000. And the San Antonio Fire Department and San Antonio Park Police are mourning two first responders that passed away from the coronavirus. The Park Police Department announced on Facebook Officer Jay Pena died yesterday morning from COVID-19. Officer Pena joined the department back in 2012 and was assigned to the core unit. In their Facebook post, the department said Officer Pena served the citizens of San Antonio with dignity and was an asset to the department. Their post went on to say he will be deeply missed and their thoughts and prayers are with his family and friends. San Antonio Fire Department confirmed active duty fire engineer Joseph Fonse also died yesterday morning from COVID complications. He was with the department since 1989 and most recently worked in the fire training division. Funeral arrangements are still pending. 
Wonderland of the Americas Mall set to reopen the booster shot clinic this morning at 10 a.m. A reminder, this is only for those who are eligible and receive the Pfizer shot for their previous doses. You must also be 65 years old or older and 18 and older with underlying health conditions like diabetes, obesity, or work in a high-risk environment. Now to the growing battle over vaccine mandates. This is uh, this time in New York. Thousands of unvaccinated health care workers there could lose their jobs. The governor putting emergency contingency plans in place. And this comes at a critical time. On average, nearly 1,600 people nationwide are dying of the virus each day. ABC's Alex Brache has the latest from Washington. Today, two major deadlines in New York's fight against COVID. First, the deadline for all New York State health care workers to get at least one shot or risk losing their jobs. The state's largest employer of health care workers says almost 91% of them are vaccinated. Still, many remain defiant. We're not monsters. We're not selfless. We're trying to do the what is at the best interest for our families. Ahead of the deadline, others rushing to get their first shot. The turnout was really good. We've had some people saying, oh, yeah, I came all the way from you know, another county because I want to get my shot, need to get my shot for work. Still, officials are preparing for possible mass firings and staff shortages. Governor Kathy Hochul even preparing to declare a state of emergency to bring in qualified health care workers from out of state, recent graduates, even the National Guard to help. Monday was also the deadline for New York City public school teachers and staff to get vaccinated. Matt Baker, a high school math teacher in Brooklyn, had COVID and lost a fellow teacher to it. He supports the mandate. My concern is that students have already started to build relationships that they haven't had in the last 18 months. Um, and then those relationships are going to come tearing apart. Teacher Asia Levistone says she's not getting the shot. I'm going to be terminated. It's going to be my last day. But that's still yet to be determined. A federal judge temporarily blocking the New York City public school mandate until further review. All of this happening as Americans are rolling up their sleeves for a third Pfizer shot. After the CDC gave the green light for Pfizer recipients 18 and older who have underlying conditions, anyone 65 and older, as well as frontline workers. And when it comes to children, Pfizer's CEO says the company plans to submit data to the FDA within a matter of days to show that it's safe and effective in children 5 to 11. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. And time now is 437 and it's about 69 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, young business owners showing others the benefits of becoming your own boss. Plus, the Dallas Cowboys are getting ready to take on the Philadelphia Eagles in Arlington tonight. We're going to have the details on the game next in your morning sports. And outside with live cam, rain in the forecast. And it's sounding like, from what I'm hearing from Mike Osterhage, we could see the potential for some perhaps flash flooding or urban flooding problems this week. We'll get details coming up. Football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. After going one and one on the road to kick off their 2021 season, the Dallas Cowboys stage their home opener tonight when they host their NFC East rivals, the Philadelphia Eagles. They gave the Super Bowl champs a run for their money in the season opener. Then they kicked their way to a 2017 victory over the Chargers in LA. Cowboys are three and a half point favorites tonight as Dak Prescott continues his road to recovery. So far he's thrown for 640 yards, three touchdowns and two picks to start the season. This is the last box to check in Prescott's recovery process, playing in front of the home crowd for the first time since suffering a season ending ankle injury. Again, Dallas hosting the Eagles tonight in Arlington kickoff set for 715. If you miss it, you can watch highlights tomorrow morning right here on GMSA. Time now, 441 and about 69 degrees for now. And still ahead, becoming your own boss, the advice one man has to say to young teens looking to start their own business. And fallout from that bombshell Britney Spears documentary, Allegations for Britney Insiders, next in your GMA First Look. And welcome back. It's 444. A new Britney Spears documentary is revealing the extreme surveillance that Britney's dad imposed on his daughter. ABC's Kaylee Hartung has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, going inside the new FX and Hulu documentary, the New York Times presents Controlling Britney Spears. Let Britney choose! 
The new bombshell allegations from insiders speaking out about the intense surveillance system that they say closely monitored Spears during her 13-year conservatorship. Her phone, her own phone and her own private conversations were used so often to control her. Just because you're in control doesn't give you the right to treat people like property. It didn't feel like she was being treated like a human being. According to the documentary, court records obtained by the Times show that the pop star quietly pushed to end her conservatorship for years. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll talk live to filmmaker Samantha Stark about what she learned while preparing the documentary and what's next in the battle over the conservatorship. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. 445. Well, back here at home, he started his own business at just 15 years old, and now he's showing others the benefits of being an entrepreneur. Jonah Covarrubias is next on What's Up South Texas. And as he tells our Japhne Gray, despite his obstacles in life, he has always believed in himself. I also wanted to be like the other kids and stuff like that, like dress nice. 20 year old Jonah Covarrubias has always loved fashion, specifically shoes. I just really couldn't afford them at the time. So you can imagine the excitement on his face as a 15 year old attending his first sneaker show at Cowboys Dance Hall and checking out all sorts of custom made sneakers. I was just like, dang, I could do this. I could put this event together. I could run out the tables. I could run out the venue. While he had that drive, he didn't have the money, but he worked hard to earn it. Jonah cut grass, sold candy, and would sell fun little school gadgets that were popular among kids. I had bought like this fidget spinner when it was like a little trend. And then that's really where I got the money to start my first event. Jonah created the Lace Up Sneaker Show, growing from just 30 vendors to now over 150. To this date, Jonah's been able to hold 10 different shows. This is a great feeling because like I put this all together. It just started off like with a laptop. It's crazy. At a young age, he faced many obstacles, including a rocky relationship with the stepfather. That really inspired me. Like I really wanted to get like my own house. That's really what was like my goal. At one point, he found himself homeless. Something had to go through for sure, definitely a learning experience to like motivate me to get to the next level. He's learned many life lessons along the way and mended his relationship with his stepfather. Jonah is even a homeowner and now a full time entrepreneur with a goal to keep expanding his lace up sneaker show. I hope to have like DeJounte Murray, maybe Lonnie Walker, some other Spurs players that's like big in the community that a lot of people know. He set up donation boxes at his events to give back to kids in need like he once was. Jonah says he hopes his comebacks in life inspire others, especially especially the youth experiencing homelessness to never give up. Believe in yourself and then like commit yourself to it 100 percent. And if you really believe in it, you can make it happen. For What's Up South Texas, I'm Jaffney Gray. Congrats to Jonah. And good luck to you, sir. Mm -hmm. And let's go ahead and check in with Mike. It was a very nice weekend. It yeah. was. And Mike, you're talking rainfall chances mm -hmm. this weekend. Of course, the way it goes around here is that we go for long spells without any rain at all, and then all of a sudden just a deluge. Yeah, it can be the situation this week. The, the one thing when it first starts working in our favor is the fact that we haven't had any rain in a long time. So a lot of it's just going to be, you know, sucked up by the dry ground. But then once everything gets kind of saturated, if you continue with more than we could see, uh, yeah, potential for some heavy downpours, obviously, as the time rolls on, the potential for uh, maybe a, a little bit of a flooding. We'll talk more about that. First of all, sunset over Six Flags. Yep, it was great to be outside. Uh, it, in the sun, it was a little bit on the, the warm side. I mean, temperatures were up around normal, upper 80s. That's what we can expect, but that humidity was really nice. And now this morning, it's still very pleasant out there, but not quite what we had the past couple of days. Dew points are up anywhere from 5, 10, uh, 16 degrees at Hondo, as well as in Kerrville, 14 degrees higher than what it was at this time yesterday. It was kind of coolish to be outside. Maybe a light sweatshirt starting off in the morning. And we will see our usual somewhat drop in uh, the humidity later on this afternoon, but then it's really going to start to kind of pump back on in here. And that's going to be the case all the way in through the weekend. So we're not going to see then as much of a drop in the afternoon. And with all that extra humidity, it's really kind of adding to obviously the amount of moisture in the atmosphere and the amount of moisture that basically can get squeezed out in the atmosphere. And so that's what we're going to have to watch out for. 
Off to the west, there's a big area of low pressure. You can see that spinning around out there up around uh, Arizona, and that's what's going to be moving on in. And then there's another one kind of on the heels of that. So it's going to be sort of a one two punch, if you will, this week as far as the uh, disturbance is giving us the rain chances today. Basically just most of the cloudy skies, partly sunny, however you want to call it. And then tomorrow we're going to have a lot of clouds around. A few showers going to try and develop uh, this particular computer model doesn't bring them in that early during the day. We'll have a few of them in the afternoon but then more later on tomorrow evening and there could actually be a bit of a uh, kind of a line of showers and thunderstorms developing in the overnight hours into two into Wednesday morning and then throughout the day on Wednesday we will have more now jumping ahead a little bit longer range computer model and it's got pretty much the same scenario as far as tomorrow night into Wednesday some potentially heavy rain and then more rain throughout the day on Wednesday and then Thursday into Friday morning another round of potentially some heavy rain around here and it looks like some of that rain is going to be sticking around even into Saturday and still a few stragglers into Sunday. So it's not going to be raining constantly, of course, but there is the potential for just a, a long stretch of rain, which is great news. But then you get those heavy pockets in there, which is not great news. 85 degrees today at noon, partly sunny skies and then a high temperature today up to 90. So we will be just a just a tad above normal humidity. You'll notice it and then that's definitely going to start to come into the picture. No ozone action day in effect today, and we did have a couple of them over the weekend. Uh, rain chances will definitely start to pick up potentially some heavy ones. Maybe Wednesday early, Friday early. Temperatures will stay uh, in the about mid upper ish 80s, but then should have a little bit of a cool front moving on through here. That combined with the rain will knock temperatures down by the uh, end of the week. But notice how the low temperatures stay in the 70s. Mm -hmm. Means mm -hmm. a lot more humidity around here. So if you get a car wash today, it's uh, you just need to have an understanding with yourself that it's going to be kind of a short term yeah. satisfaction deal. Yes. Probably so. Okay. <laughs> Very short term. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Right now, 451, about 69 degrees. And we're getting a first look at Netflix newcomers like The Sandman and Cowboy Bebop. We're going to have that and more next in your morning spotlight. Here are your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, six, five, four, Fireball eight. Daily four numbers, six, six, two, seven, Fireball zero. Cash five, five, 13, 23, 25, 28. Lotto, Texas, five, nine, 12, 21, 29, 39. And your Powerball numbers, 22, 23, 37, 62, 63, Powerball 19, Power Play 3. Good luck. Marvel action hit Black Widow was outrun in the box office, plus a lot of news out of Netflix. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. Is this what you wanted? Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings just outran fellow Marvel action hit Black Widow to become the highest grossing film domestically of the pandemic era. It banked a further $13.3 million its fourth weekend out to post a total domestic gross of $196.5 million. Bucks. We have unfinished business. That's $13.1 million more than Black Widow made, though unlike Black Widow, Shang-Chi's playing exclusively in theaters. Lots of news out of Netflix's so-called Tadum Global Fan Event. Highlights include teasers for the new seasons of Stranger Things. I was wondering if we'd meet again. Bridgerton. Right for your life. It's happening. And The Witcher. And first looks at newcomers like The Sandman and Cowboy Bebop. We also got premiere dates for Tiger King 2 and Cobra Kai's fourth season. They'll drop November 17th and December 31st, respectively. And happy birthday, Meatloaf. 74 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. Caught a trailer for the next season of Ozark this weekend, too. Oh, that bet oh, that looks it, good. It looks good. <laughs> it's brutal. 456, about 69 degrees. And still ahead in our next half hour, Tesla opens a full self-driving beta software to more customers. Plus, we're following the latest when it comes to that big train derailment up in Montana. What we know about the victims who lost their lives. And a quick look at the roads with Transguide this morning. There's a look there at Loop Ford 10 and Perrin Bidal. We will be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos after the break. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Right now at five, the search is on for a suspected robber. Where police say this man was recently seen stealing from. 
Plus, an Amtrak train with more than 150 people on board takes a deadly turn. What we know about the victims who died in that derailment. And outside with live cam early Monday morning, we're about to wrap up the month of September and we're in the upper 60s. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is September 27th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. The weather definitely cooperated. Yes, this week uh, we need to have the umbrellas handy. Mike Osterhage is here with more on that. Yes, indeed. Today you won't need them, but uh, then during the day tomorrow, you will probably start to come in handy, especially later on in the day. Right now we're starting off at 68 degrees and we're about at the normal average temperature. But look at that bottom number, the dew point, which is still OK, but that has definitely come up quite a bit compared to uh, where we were yesterday and the past couple of days. We're going to make it up to 90 later on this afternoon, so we will be just a few degrees above normal. We'll keep a fair amount of clouds around today as well. The aquifer did go up. One tenth of a foot in the past 24 hours and allergens, ragweeds, moderate mold and fall elm are all on the low side. So we've got a couple of disturbances, a couple of areas of low pressure, if you will. And you can see one just on the left hand side of your screen there. Just that counterclockwise spin right there. Oh, centered about uh, just the west of Albuquerque, New Mexico. That is going to sort of hang around in the area, bring all this energy on in, and that's what's going to help out with rain. Then there's another one kind of on the heels of that which is going to be moving in here. And that's why we're looking at somewhat of an extended period of rain. That won't be raining constantly, of course, but we do have some you know, rain chances pretty much starting tomorrow all the way through the week and temperatures. Well, low temperatures, nothing like what we had uh, late last week or even over the weekend staying in the 70s. And there could be a couple of days with some heavy rain. We'll talk about that, how much rain we can expect coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good Monday morning, sir. Hope you have good news. Yes, good news. Well, we do have some construction out there. If you want to consider that good news, that technically is because they are working to improve the roadways, but uh, definitely you want to plan ahead if you're going to be hitting out the door in the next few moments. Here's a shot from Loop 410 right at Ray Ellison. You can see that we do have a few flashing lights out there, some cones uh, indicating that, yes, we do have construction crews out there. We do have some folks already getting their morning started early. So how is this impacting traffic? Well, let's take you to the map right now. Things are still pretty green there, but two lanes are still blocked right there at Loop 410 northbound at Ray Ellison. So again, be cautious because right now it's really just a morning of construction. So as we jump off the map here, we want to take you right here to I-35 northbound at State Highway 46. There's been ongoing construction out there for the last several weeks. Right now, two lanes are blocked, but as we bring you a little bit further up here, we do see a little bit of a slowdown starting to take place right in those northbound lanes at FM 1101 with traffic moving at just 16 miles per hour. So do be prepared. Uh, that is what we're seeing right now this morning as the new week is getting going. So yeah, that is good news because obviously these TxDOT crews are working to improve the roadways and better news here. These inbound times are still pretty green despite a little bit of the red that's building up there in those northbound lanes coming in from Bernie on I-10. It's just 25 minutes, 26 from 281 in Bulverde and 26 on 35 coming in from New Braunfels to the downtown San Antonio area. So uh, one last look here at Trans Guide Loop 410 at Ray Ellison. Just a few folks out there. Just as always, make sure you're driving cautious and we're cautiously and we're going to be watching the roads closely here in the traffic lab. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers need your help finding suspects in two cases this morning. First one is a robbery at the Macy's inside Ingram Park Mall. Officers say the man on your screen is suspected of stealing items from the store about two weeks ago. They say around 1.45 p.m. he grabbed several items and threatened an employee before running off. If you recognize him or know where he may be, you're asked to call the number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. Police are also looking for the person who killed this man, 31-year-old Ivaristo Sierra. Investigators say he was murdered back in September of 2009 on Maverick Bluff Street. That's on the northeast side near Wurzbach Parkway and Wetmore Road. They say a friend found Sierra with a gunshot wound inside his home. Witnesses told police they heard a gunshot and saw a four-door gold-colored vehicle take off from the scene. If you have any information that could help them solve the murder case, you are asked to call that number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. Now to a crime alert. People voicing concerns this morning after several violent crimes on a northeast side roadway. That's because part of Starcrest has seen three homicides this year. Police say the first incident happened in late February when a man who had been shot was pushed out of an SUV. The suspect took off. Second incident happened earlier this month. Police say a man tried to rob a couple, but the couple ended up shooting and killing the suspect. 
The third incident happened just a couple weeks later. Officers found a 19 year old shot in the head. He died at the hospital. No arrests have been made. Councilman Clayton Perry, who presides over the Starcrest area, says crime in District 10 is steady, but violent crime across San Antonio as a whole is going up. It just so happens that Starcrest, they had those three violent murders right there. Uh, but again, none of them were connected. They are stepping up um, the patrols in that area. Safe officers are, are making a larger presence in that area. Uh, Councilman Perry also says every time there is a violent crime, they alert people in that area. Well, in your morning headlines, the latest on the deadly Amtrak train derailment in Montana. Zach Schneider has been identified as one of the three people killed in the crash. He was traveling into Oregon with his wife for vacation. She survived. Schneider's family calls him an incredible husband, friend, and software developer. The other two victims have not been identified. The train was carrying 146 passengers when nearly all of its cars derailed. ABC's Rena Roy has more. Overnight, the first of three victims identified in that deadly Amtrak train derailment in Montana. Zach Schneider's wife, Becca, confirming to ABC News that her husband was killed when the Empire Builder passenger train went off the rails on Saturday. Oh my God, it's on its side. My first thought was that we were derailing. And then I thought that was crazy. There was no way that we could possibly be derailing. That's insane. The train headed from Chicago to Seattle with more than 150 people on board when it took a deadly turn near the town of Joplin. Eight of the train's 10 cars derailing, several toppling to their sides in this remote area. Oh, the train's destroyed down there. Right? First responders quickly arriving on the scene while passengers jumped into action to help rescue people trapped in the wreckage. About 120, 130 yards behind us uh, was where the rest of the train was. Daniel Hutchinson and his son helping free multiple people after rocks and rubble blocked the escape route. One gentleman was able to finally crawl out from under, uh, the, out of the gravel. We helped him up a ladder, up out of the car, and then down a ladder down onto the ground. Uh, to uh, waiting assistance down there. And now we're learning more about the upkeep of the track where the train crashed. Officials revealing Sunday that section of the track was inspected less than a week ago. This morning, the NTSB is on scene, ready to examine potential causes for the crash. Amtrak releasing a statement in the wake of the accident, saying they are cooperating with investigators, adding, we share the sense of urgency to understand why the accident happened. However, until the investigation is complete, we will not comment further on the accident itself. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. A hospital spokeswoman says six people who were wounded in a mass shooting at a Tennessee Kroger are no longer in critical condition. Angie Golding says as of yesterday, one person is in serious condition and five others were in good condition. On Thursday, a gunman killed one person and himself and wounded 14 others east of Memphis. Police say the victims included 10 employees and five customers. A family friend says the gunman worked in a sushi business at the store. The Collierville store remains closed. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has vo moved a vote on a $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill to later th in the week. This is Democratic leaders shore up support for the measure. Democrats also are pushing ahead on the massive $3.5 trillion social safety net and climate change bill, which will likely be pared down. President Joe Biden's broad domestic agenda hangs in the balance and the White House says Biden spoke with lawmakers over the weekend on the path ahead. Moulin Rouge, the musical, has swept through the Tony Awards and claimed the best musical honor. It is one of 10 honors the jukebox musical took home Sunday night. The Inheritance by Matthew Lopez has been named the best new play at the Tony Awards. And Charles Fuller's A Soldier's Play won the Tony Award for Best Play Revival. Time check now. It's 5.08, about 68 degrees. And still ahead, Netflix releases a new trailer for Stranger Things. Details on what fans can expect next year. And NASA looking for a unique new ride, what the vehicle will be used for, and uh, until, when you can, until when you can send your proposal. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're about... 68 degrees, starting a little more humid than, you know, we have been the past couple of days, but still not too bad. We'll be checking in with Mike about rain chances later on. Welcome back, 512. NASA is seeking a new ride to take uh, astronauts from crew headquarters to launch pad 
ahead of the Artemis 1 moon mission from 1984 until the space shuttle program ended in 2011. Shuttle crews traveled the nine mile stretch to the launch pad aboard a NASA built Astrovan. Well, now NASA is looking to work with private companies who can either provide a new vehicle or refurbish one of NASA's heritage vehicles to use for the journey. NASA says the proposal should be unique, embrace new technology, and visually embody Artemis to the public. Proposals are due by October 22nd. And so the popular Netflix series Stranger Things got a sneak peek at the upcoming fourth season. It introduce, introduces viewers to a picturesque 1950s family until things take a turn for the worse. So fast forward a few decades to the 1980s and some familiar characters are seen exploring the seemingly now haunted house. Fans will have to wait until the new season drops next year to find out which direction the show will go. U.S. Postal Service unveiled the message Monsters Forever Stamps for First Class Mail. The four characters on the stamps, the handiwork of children's book author and illustrator Elise Gravel. According to the USPS, these stamps are, quote, sure to charm everyone along their mail delivery journey, end quote. Message Monster Stamps are available at post office locations nationwide and online. I think they're cute. Yeah. <laughs> Time now is 513 and about 68 degrees out there. Just ahead in Tech Headlines, is Instagram toxic for teens? We'll hear what Facebook has to say about a recent report. Plus, iPhone 13 users are facing a problem with their new phone. Details on the glitch and when it's going to be fixed next on GMSA. I've always focused on my career, but when we found out our son had autism, his future became my focus. Lavender baths always calmed him, so we turned bath time into a business. A and building it with my son has been my dream job. At Northwestern Mutual, our version of financial planning helps you live your dreams today. Find a Northwestern Mutual advisor at nm.com. I brought in Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein. Those who tried me felt more energy in just two weeks. Uh, Here, I'll take that. Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein, one gram of sugar, and nutrients to support immune health. Let's create your trademark style at Macy's VIP sale with an extra 30% off top designers, plus 15% off fragrances, skincare, makeup, and more. Now at Macy's. 517, welcome back. Facebook has responded to recent reports that Instagram is harmful to teens in a blog post Sunday. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Facebook is pushing back against claims that Instagram is toxic for teens. A report from the Wall Street Journal recently revealed that Instagram increases body image issues for a third of all teenage girls on the app. But Facebook, which owns Instagram, says the report misinterprets the data. Apple says it is fixing a problem with its newest phone. Customers say they can unlock the iPhone 13 using the Apple Watch. The glitch will be resolved with an upcoming software update. Tesla is expanding the number of drivers who can access the beta version of its full self-driving feature, despite concerns from regulators. Drivers must have a certain safety score derived from sensors on their car to enable it. The self-driving software does not make the car fully autonomous, a.k.a. don't sleep behind the wheel. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 518. Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos with that situation there off of Blue 410. Yeah, you know, uh, that construction that we've been keeping an eye on looks like it is wrapping up in some areas, but taking a look right now, Loop 410 at Ray Ellison, uh, still still active there. You can see right now we do have a little bit of uh, traffic that's building up there in those southbound lanes of 410, but these northbound lanes is where we're seeing just a few folks out there right now. Uh, we do have some cones obviously indicating there's some closures out there due to construction, but the good news is it looks like it's not impacting traffic right now. The map does show that it's pretty green in these northbound lanes at Ray Ellison Boulevard. Right now, we do see that two lanes are still blocked, uh, but some good progress over here as we take a big jump on the map where we talked about some construction off I-35. Uh, those northbound lanes there at State Highway 46, there was some construction going on there that led to two lanes being closed. Thankfully, that looks like it has since cleared out or it, they are picking up, so traffic is also picking up. That slowdown we mentioned uh, looks like things are now moving nice and smoothly at 63 miles per hour. Right now, it has just been a morning of constructions. There have not 
not been a lot of issues out on the roadway, so perfect time to grab that cup of coffee. But uh, something that you want to make sure that you keep on your radar is this construction that we've talked about there off of I-10. And now this is out towards Kendall County. It's uh, a road construction that's going to be leading to some closures for at least six weeks. It's been ongoing, uh, but there was a delay due to some uh, weather issues, our weather forecasting. So right now, Texas crews are working to have this area cleaned up, but uh, it's a closure of the eastbound frontage road at State Highway 46 intersection and the closure of the upper Balconis Road again right at the eastbound frontage road intersection. This is right there along I-10. This is part of that expansion project. Again, this has been ongoing, but it should be wrapping up in about six weeks. Uh, start time is at 6 a.m. So make sure that you are preparing accordingly as we take one last look here at Transguide. Traffic is building, but again, uh, Techstar crews remain out there working to improve the roadway. So let's make sure we give them a break and slow down. Guys, all right, we have a team exercise here with Mike's picture. If we all stare at this long enough, it's almost like we've been at the lake all weekend. Yeah. True. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know the, the orange is kind of a pumpkin orange almost. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw some yeah. great pictures uh, of sunsets this weekend. Uh, one of the best was uh, out of College Station. Just oh. you know, oranges and pinks and purples. Yeah, it was just Great weekend overall. Sunrises, sunsets, everything. The humidity was fantastic. Now, humidity's kind of come back into the picture a little bit more. It's not as though it, it kind of hits you when you walk out the door, but you can sort of smell a little more humidity out there this morning. And we do have a fair amount of clouds around much of the area. We did hit 89 yesterday, which is a about where it should be 88 is the, the average normal high temperature. Of course, nothing really off the charts on this uh, on this map as far as temperatures, and that's going to be the case today. Although at a degree, a couple two three degrees to a lot of the high temperatures, we're going to see some mid and even uh, getting close to the upper 90s, especially down there along the, the Rio Grande Valley and pretty much 90 give or take degree or so in around the metropolitan area. Dew point temperatures, of course, have been very, very low in behind that front that moved through last week starting to come up a little bit and then they're really going to be up there this week. So that's going to cloud cover is going to help to keep high temperatures down somewhat. Low temperatures will be staying definitely on the mild side and also with all that extra humidity around here, that's going to help to feed showers and some potentially heavy downpours with some of the thunderstorms mixed in. So we've got some clouds right now, as you can see on the uh, satellite picture, and then off to the west of us, there's that counterclockwise spin, and that's the low, which is going to just sort of slowly work its way in our direction, pull in a lot of energy around here, and then there's going to be sort of another one on the, the heels of that. Here's what this, the outlook looks like for the next about six, seven days. Rain won't really come into the picture today nor throughout much of the day tomorrow, but really starting tomorrow late and then in through uh, the rest of the week and going into the weekend. So we're looking at about widespread one to three inches, the majority in parts of the hill country. Now that's good news as far as the uh, recharge zone is concerned. This doesn't though take into account the fact that we might see even and some potentially heavy downpours here. It looks like especially as of right now, Wednesday early and then also early on Friday. And there could be some some of those bullseyes that move through the area. 85 degrees, partly sunny skies today at noon. High temperature then makes it up to 90. So we will be just a couple of notches above normal. A mm, little bit of humidity out there today. We're not uh, going to be seeing any rain today, but then tomorrow we'll have a couple of scattered showers and thunderstorms, especially later on in the day. Then rain starts to move on in here. And again, it's not going to be raining everywhere, but we've got good chance for some widespread Again, widespread one to three inches of rain when it's all said and done. Heavier pockets on top of that. It looks like especially uh, Wednesday and Friday and even a few more showers left over in through the weekend. Doesn't it look more like a late spring kind of forecast week? It really week does with overall? all that rain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's reminiscent of what early July and then May when That's we had those true. We had extended periods of rain. Maybe getting that again. Okay. Be nice. All yeah. right. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 523, about 68 degrees. And here's some video for the guys there. Gal Gadot shows moves worthy of Wonder Woman. Coming up after the break, a look at how she took down The Rock and Ryan Reynolds. We're just talking about movies almost that entire commercial break. Today's entertainment news includes plenty of big screen action stars. CNN's David Daniel has the details in today's Hollywood Minute. Take it easy. 
This is easy. Gal Gadot shows moves worthy of Wonder Woman, taking down Dwayne Johnson and Ryan Reynolds in the first clip from Red Notice. The big budget action flick about an FBI agent, an art thief, and a con artist debuts November 12th on Netflix. The sequel to Aquaman doesn't arrive until December of 2022, but its star is already trying to pique fans' interest. Jason Momoa tells Fandango the underwater action sequences in Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom have gone to a whole other level and that the film has a lot more heart. He also praised the comedy in the script, quote, I giggled reading it. The newest member of my family. <laughs> Dave Bautista has a new friend. The actor and animal lover had posted on Instagram trying to track down who abandoned the pit bull puppy who was found eating garbage with a metal chain embedded in her neck. After several weeks of Humane Society care, the dog has a new home, a new name, Penny Bautista, and a new leash on life. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Ah, oh, sweet story and Hi. cute play on words there at the end. Yeah, well, I'm glad the pup's doing better. New leash on life. Mm -hmm. 527, about 68 degrees. And still ahead in the next half hour, debunking a myth that COVID-19 vaccines cause hearing loss. We're taking a look at that study. Plus, people out in Kerrville in the Texas Hill Country should be uh, extra alert after two more cases of rabies were confirmed. We'll have the latest coming up. And diet soda is the lesser evil compared to regular soda, right? Right. Well, the answer may surprise you. That's ahead on GMSA at 6. Making headlines this hour, a man killed in the weekend crash has been identified. We'll tell you who he was and how San Antonio police say that crash happened. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. Not any rain in this shot, but we are expecting some chances this week and a good morning to you. It is Monday, September 27th. Hope you guys had a fabulous weekend. The weather was just perfect. It was a great time to get outside, especially in the early morning hours. That's right. But this week, a uh, complete change to the forecast. Mike Ostrage appearing in numerous productions of Singing in the Rain. <laughs> <laughs> Not today, but yeah, throughout uh, pretty much the, the latter half of the week, starting somewhat tomorrow, but then all the way even in through the weekend. We'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, fairly tranquil out there right now. You will notice a bit more humidity. It's not as dry as what it was yesterday. Uh, it's not overly humid. It's not like it's going to, you know, just hitch in the face, but uh, it, there is definitely more out there. Not much of a breeze to speak of. We're at 68 degrees right now and temperatures in the hill country. Even remember last week we got down in the mid 40s at one point. That's not the situation today. It's pretty consistent out there thanks to the extra humidity as well as some of the uh, the cloud cover. And we'll keep sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds around throughout the day. Ragweed is moderates, mold and fall elm are both on the low side. 85 at noon, 90 for high temperature. Going to call it partly sunny skies. At times a little bit more sunshine here and there. And temperatures are going to be just a couple of degrees above normal. Like I said, we'll start to see some rain chances tomorrow. Then they're going to pick up throughout the especially latter half of the week. Could have some potentially heavy downpours, and it also looks like rain is going to be sticking around in through uh, even a good chunk of the first weekend of October. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Anything big going on? Yeah, I like the way the roads are looking right now, Mike. We have a few of these shots from Transguide cameras showing us how things are looking right now. Keep in mind, there are over 200 cameras on the roadways. And right now, uh, these shots do show us what's going on. That's uh, is right now construction that's going off off Loop 410 at Ray Ellison. Uh, I-35 North at State Highway 46. We did have some construction out there that is cleared up. Uh, but other parts, it's looking really quiet. I-10 at Camp Bolas, not anyone out there at this time. But 35 at Flotus shows that some people are getting out on the roadways. But it's a perfect time to grab that cup of coffee and really just enjoy uh, your morning commute because we're not seeing anything big right now on the roadways. Now, as you just saw, though, we do have that construction still going on out there off Loop 410 northbound right at Ray Ellison. Two lanes are still blocked out there, but it looks like Texas crews are picking up uh, right now, though. It is still really green on the screen, which is what we like to see, especially for a Monday morning. Uh, let's go ahead and keep it that way because these inbound times are also pretty green across the board. As you can see right now, if you're heading to San Antonio in the next few moments, 29 minutes coming in from Seguin on I-10. We're looking at maybe just 22 minutes right now on 87 in Lavernia and 29 coming in from Flotusville. So we've been off to a really nice start here. 281 at Hildebrand. One last look here. We are seeing a few more folks out there this morning. Uh, as always, make sure you're taking it easy out on the roadways. We have gas prices coming up here in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie.
Thank you, Stephen. We now know the name of a man killed in a crash early Saturday morning. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office has identified him as 26-year-old Bruce Jimenez. Jimenez died after San Antonio police say he lost control of his vehicle, hit a tree, and rolled over into the Alamo Square Shopping Center. That's off 35 and South Cross. Police say when they arrived, Jimenez was unresponsive and trapped inside his vehicle. He was pronounced dead at the scene. A woman was outside of the vehicle with minor injuries. Police say alcohol was not a factor in the crash. The San Antonio Fire Department and the San Antonio Park Police are mourning the loss of two first responders who passed away from the coronavirus. Park Police Department announced on Facebook that Officer Jay Pena died yesterday morning from COVID-19. Officer Pena joined the department back in 2012 and was assigned to the core unit. In their Facebook post, the department said Officer Pena served the citizens of San Antonio with dignity and was an asset to the apartment, the department. Their post went on to say he will deeply be missed and their thoughts and prayers are with his family and friends. San Antonio Fire Department confirming active duty fire engineer Joseph M. Fonts died yesterday morning from COVID complications. He'd been with the department since 1989 and most recently worked at the fire training division. Funeral arrangements are pending. And CPN's energy plans to hold its monthly meeting today at 1 p.m. Board members are scheduled to discuss whether they still want to give three and a half acres of prime downtown real estate to the San Antonio Museum of Art or sell it. The board had previously agreed to give it to the museum back in 2015. We will have the latest updates throughout the day on KSET.com. Now to this video, Customs and Border Protection say commercial cargo operations will resume at the Del Rio Port of Entry at 8 this morning. Port closed back on the 17th due to the influx of thousands of migrants around the International Bridge. Alverde County Commissioner told KSAT the migrants who were camping out in Del Rio were cleared out Friday. Just days after almost 15,000, mostly Haitians, arrived seeking asylum. Slowly but surely, new cases of COVID-19 have been gradually dropping, and experts say we're not out of the woods just yet, but before the end of the year, we could see the latest surge finally subside. CNN's Britt Conway has a look at what health experts expect over the next couple of months. Every morning I come in and go through every COVID patient, determine who's on ventilators. I have to report the deaths. Unfortunately, it's a, it's a daily event. Hospitals all over the country are straining against COVID-19. Deaths are on the rise, even as new cases decline. But experts say don't let the case count fool you. Delta isn't done. I'm not at all convinced that the Delta surge has peaked in the U.S. and I fully expect case counts to go up again across the country over the weeks and months to come. This Delta wave is going to surge across the country and hit different regions at different times. But once it plays out... This may be the last major wave of infection. I think by Thanksgiving, you'll have seen this move its way through the country. The virus isn't going away, but prevalence levels will decline to a level that feels more manageable. But what exactly does manageable mean? We were seeing a seven-day average of up to 160,000 cases a day at the peak of the surge. Right now, the CDC says that average is closer to 114,000 new cases a day. And Dr. Gottlieb expects will eventually drop down to about 20,000 cases a day. But getting there depends on more people getting vaccinated. There's still a lot of pockets of vulnerability, and COVID's so contagious, it finds its way into those pockets of vulnerability. I'm Britt Conway reporting. And trending right now on KSET.com, Dwayne Chapman, also known as Dog the Bounty Hunter, is joining the search to find Gabby Petito's boyfriend. The New York Post states that Chapman went down the home of Laundrie's parents in Northport, Florida, and knocked on their door, but no one answered. He says he has received tips that the 23-year-old is somewhere in the Appalachian Trail and that Petito was reported missing on September 11th by her parents after she didn't respond to calls and texts for several days. Her body was discovered last Sunday in the Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. Also on our website, two more cases of rabies have been confirmed in Kerrville. City officials are now telling its residents to keep an extra close eye on their pets and make sure they're vaccinated against the illness. Both of the cases were reported earlier this week after Kerrville County Animal Services tested two raccoons, both of whom came up positive. Time check, just about 539, about 68 degrees. Two researchers behind the technology used in the COVID-19 vaccine are being recognized. Just ahead, how much money they are now splitting for their hard work. Now we're getting a glimpse of what technology is San Antonio 
in San Antonio is looking like right now. Max Massey has a breakdown coming up next in our leading SA segment recap. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, starting slightly more humid than we have been, but still tolerable. We can take it and expecting rain this week. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's 541. The tech community in the San Antonio area continues to grow. It does. Dax Moreno, organizer of SA Startup Week, joined us on Leading SA this past weekend. Discussed what the future of startups looks like in the Alamo City. Always a great conversation with Dax, talking about the excitement, all the energy surrounding the technology sector right here in the Alamo City, the perpetual growth and the new opportunities for our community. We talked about a lot. We talked about what makes San Antonio so competitive and unique. We talked about growing during this pandemic. We also talked about what the future holds. Take a listen. What we're really hoping to do this year is uh, just invite more folks in. Come check out what's going on with startups. And it's not just about a huge focus on tech startups. We have a lot of people who are building products, consumer goods that are coming out. Uh, we're attracting some uh, folks from Austin and other places that are going to be coming in. You can find our full conversation right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Then join us this coming Wednesday, 2 p.m. We're going to have our technology town hall. We're going to have a live conversation about startups and the exciting future of San Antonio. Guys, back to you. And time now is 5.43 and it's about 68 degrees out there. Just ahead on GMSA, researchers debunking an online rumor that the COVID vaccines cause hearing loss. Why researchers say there is no reason to fear the vaccine. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuide this morning. Looking there at Loop 410 at Northwest Military Highway. Things are moving there. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavasso soon. Five forty-six. A new study shows the COVID-19 vaccines are safe and don't cause hearing loss. ABC's Ike Jachi has more about the myth in today's Medical Minute. Much of the country has received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. Many of these shots have been with Pfizer or Moderna vaccines that use mRNA technology. Now, researchers are debunking an online rumor about the vaccines causing hearing loss. A new study looked closely at these mRNA vaccines and tracked people's experiences after getting the shot. In all, scientists looked over 86 million shots given in the United States. They found that there was no increased occurrence of hearing loss following the vaccine. They say there is no reason to fear the vaccine. In fact, getting everybody vaccinated and protected will be the key to getting our country back on track. With this Medical Minute, I'm Ike Giacci. And two U.S. researchers behind the technology used in Moderna and Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccines are the winners of what's known as America's Nobel. Catalin Carrico and Dr. Drew Wiseman developed the M RNA technology and what's considered the breakthrough that enabled the rapid production of the two vaccines. For their work, they received the 2021 Alaska Clinical Medical Research Award. Both are researchers at the University of Pennsylvania. The pair will split a $250,000 prize. Wow. That's amazing. It is amazing. Con uh, congratulations to both of you. 547 on your Monday morning. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, everyone. Well, right now the roads are shaping up to look nice and smooth. If you're heading out in the next few moments, 37 at 9th Street, just a few folks out there this morning. Uh, keep in mind, we have not spotted a lot of issues out there, so this is good news. Uh, some of the construction that we've been keeping an eye on looks like it has since wrapped up, so there's some good progress there. Uh, but if you are planning on heading up to New Braunfels, maybe later this week, there will be a temporary closure later down the line as we see these eastbound and westbound lanes of Conrad's Lane and Kohlenberg Road at I-35 will be closed. But that's beginning September 29th, so still two days away to start making those plans. Uh, it will be starting at 7 in the evening. This will allow for the dem demolition and reconstruction of the Conrad's Lane and Kohlenberg Road Bridge. Uh, now, TxDOT does anticipate if there's not going to be any issues out there, this should be open by summer of 2022. So that's something you want to make sure that you have planned accordingly. But right now, the map is showing that we have a lot of green on the screen, which is really good if you're going to be heading out the next few moments to maybe head that, grab that cup of coffee.
coffee or maybe get those uh, cars filled up with gas right now. AAA, AAA that is, is reporting the average gas price in Bear County is 271 around the state. We're looking at 282. The country right now shows 318. Now it does. Uh, AAA did report last week that that number has actually stabilized as we continue to see the recoveries from hurricanes Ida and Nick. So that's some good news there, but we'll continue to watch those numbers closely as well as the roads. One last look here at 37 at 9th Street. Things are getting moving guys. That's good news. Thank, Thank you, Stephen. You, Stephen. That's a beautiful <laughs> moon behind you. It is the waning gibbous. It's okay. going to be at the third quarter stage, kind of the halfway point uh, just in a couple of days. Of course, last week was the, the harvest moon, the full moon closest to the autumnal equinox. But yeah, love. Did you can see the craters? That's good telescope somebody's got on that one. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Got some clouds hanging around here this morning. Uh, it's still pleasant when you step outside. You sure don't need a jacket though. And we also have some more humidity. It was great over the weekend. Nice coolish uh, mornings. That was the extension of what we had last week. And then the humidity has expected as expected has started to come back in here. It's not oppressively humid, but you kind of notice it a little more. And also there's a big low out there to the west of us. That is going to be kind of driving the weather, if you will, for pretty much the next week. That and some other disturbances along with it. So here's what's going to be going on with the uh, computer models and going into the next couple of days. This model does have a few showers. Now this is one of those, again, broad brush computer model, so it's not going to be raining everywhere, but rain chances will start to move into the area tomorrow afternoon. We're not going to see anything today and then tomorrow night, a few of those showers and thunderstorms and going into Wednesday as well. There are going to be now, of course, won't be raining constantly, but there are going to be pockets here and there where we're going to have some heavy downpours and there are some indications there could be that could be the situation Wednesday morning as well as on into uh, Friday morning and even throughout the uh, evening hours on Friday too. Obviously, this is still a few days off four or five days off. So as time goes on, we'll see how it looks. But as of right now, maybe on the damp side for uh, some of the games Friday night and also at least with this particular long range computer model rain sticks around Friday, excuse me, Saturday and then into Sunday. Again, it's not raining constantly, but we will continue to have some of these uh, showers and even a few thunderstorms around here and maybe even uh, lingering into the first part of next week. And overall, we're looking at about maybe one to three inches of rain and then the heavier pockets on top of that. And that'd be cumulative over the course of about five to six days. So we've got that low off there to the west of us. It doesn't come right in on top, but just enough to get things going around here. And even though that may kind of fade off, there's still going to be this trough out there to the west, and this is going to continue to keep the rain chances around here again Thursday, Friday into the weekend. And we really don't have the high sitting in on top of us at all. And then another low tries to develop down there around the Baja of California, and that's also going to start to send some energy in our direction. So we've got a bunch of different things kind of pushing all the rain chances in our direction for about the next week. 85 degrees, partly sunny skies today at noon, high temperature up to 90. Humidity is going to be OK and you can kind of smell it when you step outside this morning. Tomorrow we'll have a couple of uh, showers, even a thunderstorm or two in the afternoon. And then especially Wednesday through the weekend, we're going to have more rain around here and potentially a couple of spots with some heavy downpours. You smiled when I said you can kind of smell the rain or smell the humidity. You can definitely do that this morning and then yes. we're going to smell rain, of course. Right. Which is yes. better. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. I vote for that. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you very much, Mike. 552, about 68 degrees. And just ahead, helping in the fight against hunger in our community. Details on where you can donate for families in need. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick 3, 654, Fireball 8. Daily 4, number 6627, Fireball 0. Cash 5, 513, 23, 25, 28. And Lotto Texas, 5, 9, 12, 21, 29, 39. Your Powerball numbers, 22, 23, 37, 62, 63, Powerball 19, Power Play 3. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA with that vaccine mandate for some states approaching and booster shots now rolling out, CDC Director Rochelle Walensky is going to join us live to break it all down. You'll see that and so much more right here on GMA. 
The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center provides blood used in emergencies for 48 counties and over 100 hospitals and clinics. However, its supply continues to be very low. That's why KSAT and our community partners have teamed up to get more donors, those especially with type O blood. One donation can save up to three lives and keep the blood bank adequately stocked. There needs to be at least 600 donors a day. If you'd like to help out, you can make an appointment at universityhealthsystem.com or call the number on your screen. That's 210-358-2812. September is Hunger Action Month, and now through the very end of the month, you can drop off donations at Randolph Brooks Federal Credit Union locations. They're accepting non-perishables like cereal, beans, rice, even diapers and pet food. If you'd like to help out here, we have all this information on KSAT.com. Well, ahead in our next hour, GMSA, the Cowboys ready for prime time with a matchup against a familiar foe. We've got a preview of Monday Night Football and the latest on a horrific train crash over the weekend derailment that left multiple people dead and several wounded. Back here at home, we now know the name of a man killed in a rollover crash on the south side this weekend. We have those details. And Stephen is here tracking traffic, building traffic out there at 35 at Flores. And we're continuing to look at cameras around town. There's 35 at Weedner. You're watching GMSA on a Monday. One more hour of news, weather, and your traffic authority still to come. Stick around. We will be right back. Two major vaccine mandate showdowns brewing in New York today. I'm Alex Pache in Washington. I'll have details coming up. San Antonio police still working very hard to solve a murder that happened more than a decade ago. We have those details. And taking a look outside with live cam this Monday morning, starting a little bit more humid than we have been, but it's still pretty nice out there. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's Monday, September 27th. Happy Monday. Hope you had a wonderful weekend and thank you for starting with us. Uh, I had a great weekend. Uh, weather was great, cooperated all the way, you know, just cool in the morning and just sunny and nice in the afternoon. I'll brag for her. She won her <laughs> age group at uh, Head for the Cure 5K on Saturday morning. Congratulations, thank Steph. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the weather helped definitely yes, with that course. low Look humidity. She changes the subject. So how, <laughs> how fast were you running? Uh, about eight eight minute miles which eight. is good for me okay. and of course my age group you know between 45 and 50 so that's okay but i got my age group okay. wonderful <laughs> thank you that's outstanding thank you guys. And you guys had a pretty good turnout yeah it was good. a great turnout because you know as of you know last year it was all virtual so mm -hmm. it was nice to see you know people back people back and you know supporting uh team boyle you know in yep. honor of our former news director oh that's fantastic yeah. well no without a doubt it was a fantastic weather weekend mike you know and this morning i was just thinking about it had we not had such a great weekend it'd be Pretty nice this morning. Mm -hmm. You know, the humidity is back a little bit, but uh, yeah, compared to the weekend, it's not as nice. We've got some clouds hanging around here, and we're going to keep plenty of clouds around. Temperatures are very consistent all around the area. 63, New Braunfels, 67, Pleasanton, Seguin at 62, and we are holding at 67 degrees here in town, so just a little bit below the uh, average low temperature. Ragweed is on the moderate side. Mold and fall elm are both low, and throughout the day, temperatures, uh, yeah, we may drop another couple of notches here and there. We do have a few clouds hanging around and that's going to prevent us from getting even cooler and 85 degrees at noon today. And we'll keep a lot of clouds. I'll just call it partly sunny skies throughout the day and we're going to make it up to 90. Now we don't have any rain chances today. However, as we go into tomorrow, especially later in the afternoon tomorrow, rain chances are going to start to move into the picture and then really start to pick up. And we're looking at well, at least the shot of rain all the way through the rest of the week then and then going even into the weekend and potentially a couple of heavier downpours. We'll talk about that, see how much rain to expect and uh, when it's going to be done. That may be a while. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on, sir? It's been pretty quiet up to this point. Yeah, Mike, I think that's a good sign, especially as we start a brand new week. Not a lot of issues out on the roadways right now. You can see traffic pretty light there at 35 at Flores. Just getting a little bit more busy, though. We are seeing some folks getting out here at 35 at Weedner, which is typically a spot where traffic tends to build as the morning starts to progress. So a few of these shots at Transguide may show that it is getting a little bit busier, but thankfully, 
hopefully it's still pretty light enough to where you can get out on time and grab that cup of coffee, get your morning started. But uh, a few stalls to talk about. We have one reported there off Loop 410 northbound at 37. Thankfully, still early enough to where we're not seeing any delays there. But as always, make sure you're checking your vehicles properly because we're seeing that trend continue right up here off I-35 South when at George C. Beach Avenue. Not a lot of issues when it comes to these stalls causing any uh, traffic delays. But as we take a wider look out at the map, it is still pretty green and thankfully that's a good sign, especially if you're going to be traveling out the door in the next few moments. And if you're heading to San Antonio, well, green across the board, you'll find here off 37 and from Pleasanton, it's 28 minutes, 17 minutes coming in from 35 and Lytle and just 18 minutes coming in from Highway 90 and Castroville. Uh, but one last look at trans guide. Some of these shots do show it's getting a little bit busier. We had some construction out there off Loop 410 at Ray Ellison. Looks like that is wrapped up, so uh, you won't have any issues at this moment. But as always, watch the roads closely. We're going to be keeping an eye on things as well, guys. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police and crime stoppers asking for your help solving a pair of cases this morning. First one's a robbery at Ingram Park Mall over on the west side of town. Happened back on September 14th. That's going to say the person on your screen stole items from the Macy's inside the mall and threatened an employee before taking off. And police are still working to solve a September 2009 murder case. 31 year old Ivaristo Sierra was murdered on the city's northeast side in Maverick Bluff Street near Wurzbach Parkway and Wetmore Road. Officers say Sierra was found inside his home with a gunshot wound. Witnesses told police they saw a gold four door vehicle take off from the scene. If you have any information about either of these cases, you're asked to call 210-224-STOP and you could get a reward of up to $5,000. New developments this morning on the deadly crash that happened over the weekend. A member of law enforcement, one of the three people killed after police say a suspected drunk driver sped through a west side intersection on Sunday morning. The Medical Center Health System in Odessa shared this picture online. Sergeant Daniel Valenzua Jr. served with the system and the Ector County Hospital District Police Department. 37-year-old, his 69-year-old father, Daniel Val excuse me, Valenzuela Sr. and his 84-year-old grandmother, Andrea Uvale, were also killed in that crash Sunday morning. A fourth person who was in the vehicle is in the hospital. Police say the 17-year-old suspect, Elijah James Montalvo, sped through that intersection of Culebra and 1604 before hitting a car and Valenzuela and his family were in. Investigators said he was suspected of drinking. Before that crash, the team was taken to the hospital to be evaluated. Other news this morning, a 12-year-old San Antonio boy being credited for saving his grandma and their pets from a large fire it happened yesterday afternoon on the far west side of home on Cliff Creek. Cynthia Sanchez says she was taking a nap when her grandson Elijah was playing a video game. He noticed flames around their AC unit outside, screamed for his grandmother to wake up. The home is a total loss. The family does plan to rebuild. Still unclear what sparked that fire. In your morning headlines, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has moved a vote on a $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill to later in the week. Democrats are also pushing ahead on the massive $3.5 trillion social safety net and climate change bill, which will likely be pared down. President Joe Biden's broad domestic agenda hangs in the balance, and the White House says Biden spoke with lawmakers over the weekend on the path ahead. And now to the growing battle over vaccine mandates. Thousands of unvaccinated healthcare workers in New York could lose their jobs. This comes as a critical time. On average, nearly 1,600 people nationwide are dying of the virus each day. ABC's Alex Perche has the latest. Good morning. Yeah, in New York, there's a pair of major vaccine showdowns today. One with New York State healthcare workers and another with New York City teachers and employees. Today, two major deadlines in New York's fight against COVID. First, the deadline for all New York State health care workers to get at least one shot or risk losing their jobs. The state's largest employer of health care workers says almost 91 percent of them are vaccinated. Still, many remain defiant. We're not monsters. We're not selfless. We're trying to do the what is at the best interest for our families. Ahead of the deadline, others rushing to get their first shot. The turnout is really good. We've had some people saying, oh, yeah, I came all the way from you know, another county because I want to get my shot, need to get my shot for work. Still, officials are preparing for possible mass firings and staff shortages. Governor Kathy Hochul even preparing to declare a state of emergency to bring in qualified health care workers from out of state, recent graduates, even the National Guard to help. 
Monday was also the deadline for New York City public school teachers and staff to get vaccinated. That's still yet to be determined. A federal judge temporarily blocking the New York City public school mandate until further review. All of this happening as Americans are rolling up their sleeves for a third Pfizer shot after the CDC gave the green light for Pfizer recipients 18 and older who have underlying conditions, anyone 65 and older, as well as frontline workers. And when it comes to children, Pfizer's CEO says the company plans to submit data to the FDA within a matter of days to show that it's safe and effective in children 5 to 11. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, the Wonderland of the Americas Mall is set to reopen the booster shot clinic later this morning at 10. It's only for those who received the Pfizer shot for their previous doses. You must be 65 years or older or 18 and older with underlying health conditions or if you work in a high risk environment. For more info about the coronavirus vaccine upcoming clinics, head on over to ksat.com. And time now is 608 and about 67 degrees out there. Are you ready to sing and dance? Still to come and look at some of the biggest moments from the Tony Awards. And also after the break, Facebook is responding to reports that Instagram is harmful to teens. Outside with live cam. Yeah, it was an amazing weekend. Hope you're able to get outside and do something fun this weekend with your family. Traffic picking up. We're getting your Monday rolling right here on GMSA. morning, Facebook pushing back against claims that Instagram is toxic for teens. A report from the Wall Street Journal says Instagram increases body image issues for a third of all teen girls on the app. But Facebook, which owns Instagram, says the report misinterprets the data. Apple says it is fixing a problem with its newest phone. Customers say they can't unlock their iPhone 13 as using the Apple Watch, a feature that was introduced by the company. The glitch will be resolved with an upcoming software update. And now to Broadway's biggest night of the year. Broadway itself came back just this month, and now the Tonys are back. ABC's Will Gans has more. After two and a half years, Broadway is back. the Tony Awards back to celebrate the return of live theater. I've got sunshine. On a cloudy day. And the best of the season before the shutdown. Adrian Warren winning for her portrayal of Tina Turner. Thank you, Michael Lajaday Jr., for getting me in shape for this show three times, and I'm not doing it again. But it was an odd show fitting of an odd season. Aaron Tveit winning Best Actor, the only one nominated for the award. A Tony's first. As for the night's biggest award, best musical. And the Tony Award goes to oh, Moulin Rouge. <laughs> and like every great award show, touching tributes, surprise appearances. That's you, Josh. No, it's my name is Dr. Mustafa. Yes, it is me. I'm so sorry. It's you. And in a night of show-stopping duets, two Broadway giants returning to sing an old favorite. Moulin Rouge, the musical, dances away with 10 wins total. And you saw Cheetah Rivera there presenting the Tony for Best Musical. 64 years ago to the day, on that very same stage, Cheetah made her Broadway debut as Anita in West Side Story. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. Tesla expanding the number of drivers who can access the beta version of its full self-driving feature despite concerns from regulators. Drivers must have a certain safety score derived from sensors on their car to enable it. The self-driving software does not make the car fully autonomous. And time now, 6.15. Time to check in with our Stephen Cavazos. Things are shaping up to be pretty nice right now. Traffic is starting to build in some areas. Uh, as we take a look here at Trans Guide, uh, we want to show you 281 at Hildebrand. Just a few folks out there this morning. US 9 at Medio Creek looking a little bit busier. And if we jump to one more shot there, 281 at San Pedro, it is getting busier. But thankfully, there's not going to be a lot of issues right now. The big thing that we are spotting, though, are some of these stalls. This one just came up there off Loop 410 northbound at I-37. We see the same 
same stall that's still out there of I-37 northbound at Goliad Road. And we do have another stall further up right here along I-35 southbound at George C. Beach Avenue. It has been shaping up to be a morning of stalls. Uh, that seems to be the trending issue right now as we zoom out of the map. Uh, but as you can see, though, it's still pretty green on the screen. So that is definitely some good news. It is still very early on to get out on the roadway. It's getting a little bit busier, though. So plenty of time to grab that cup of coffee, get your morning going. Thankfully, it's been a good start, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, thank you. Coffee sounds great for a Monday morning. <laughs> Definitely. And a Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. Well, every true. Day. Every morning. <laughs> and what was great was to be outside this weekend in the morning, just to, you know, drink coffee, oh, yeah. a sweatshirt oh, yeah. on. I actually Beautiful. had to pull on a, a light jacket Saturday morning sitting yes. on the back porch. Yeah, early, I, I, early. I, I was up right around sunrise. Right. It yep. was cold yep. then. And had a sweatshirt cool. on and then did, didn't need it for long because it warmed up nice and quickly. Now, we do have a little bit more in the way of humidity around here this morning. It's not bad, but you just kind of, as I keep saying, you just kind of smell the extra humidity. Temperatures are slightly below average, below normal. Uh, we'll drop down to 65 degrees, mostly cloudy skies. And I'll call it partly sunny, mostly cloudy. There'll be some areas, a little bit more sunshine today, but we will have a lot of clouds hanging around here. 90 high temperature, which is just a few degrees above normal. Great day to go to the beach. Yes, it was a lot of folks that posted uh, beach pictures and this is always a very cool sight to see. If you've never toured Lexington, go take a look. Have you been down there, Mark? Yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's pretty. It's definitely worth the visit. Yeah, it, it, it's it's so cool and I had the opportunity to spend the night on a couple of nights when my boys were in the uh, Cub Scouts and uh, yeah, it's just very neat. So plus if you're an airplane geek, you're going to love it. So like me and like Mark. All right, we've got some clouds that are hanging around here right now, and uh, we'll keep, like I said, a fair amount throughout the day. And notice how there is some rain well off there to the west right now. There may be a couple of those showers trying to get into some of our extreme western counties later on today. It's this big low, which is spinning out there right over along the uh, Arizona New Mexico border, and that's going to very slowly kind of edge its way in our direction. Obviously, that counterclockwise flow is throwing some of that uh, energy in our direction, and this thing's going to be sticking around around for a while and there's also another feature which will sort of uh, sort of move in on the heels of it if you will it's kind of a, a one two punch here's what we're looking at today just a fair amount of clouds around with some sunshine thrown in a lot more in the way of clouds tomorrow and then some showers developing in the afternoon. And this is again is that computer model with the broad brush so it's not going to be raining constantly but we will have showers off and on and then there's going to be the pockets of some potentially heavy rain uh, one chance it looks like being Wednesday the next being on Friday Thursday we'll still have a few of those showers around here and then again Friday uh, Thursday night into early Friday and throughout the day Friday going into the evening and then even sticking around into Saturday as well as Sunday and maybe even the first part of next week now as far as rainfall potential right now we're looking at about one to three inches widespread around the area. It looks like the lion's share may be in portions of the hill country. Good news for the uh, recharge zone. And then there's going to be the pockets then on top of that. Starting off, of course, given the fact that everything is so dry out there, a lot of the rain is just going to soak in quite nicely. But once, as this continues, once the ground obviously gets saturated, then we're going to have to uh, be thinking about runoff. So 85 degrees today, partly cloud, excuse me, partly sunny skies at noon. I've always focused on my career, but when we found out our son had autism, his future became my focus. Lavender baths always calmed him, so we turned bath time into a business. A and building it with my son has been my dream job. At Northwestern Mutual, our version of financial planning helps you live your dreams today. Find a Northwestern Mutual advisor at nm.com. I brought in Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein. Those who tried me felt more energy in just two weeks. Uh, Here, I'll take that. Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein, one gram of sugar, and nutrients to support immune health. Let's create your trademark style at Macy's VIP sale with an extra 30% off top designers, plus 15% off fragrances, skincare, makeup, and more. Now at Macy's. In this morning's GMA First Look, going inside the new FX and Hulu documentary, the New York Times presents Controlling Britney Spears. Let Britney choose! 
The new bombshell allegations from insiders speaking out about the intense surveillance system that they say closely monitored Spears during her 13-year conservatorship. Her phone, her own phone and her own private conversations were used so often to control her. Just because you're in control doesn't give you the right to treat people like property. It didn't feel like she was being treated like a human being. According to the documentary, court records obtained by The Times show that the pop star quietly pushed to end her conservatorship for years. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll talk live to filmmaker Samantha Stark about what she learned while preparing the documentary and what's next in the battle over the conservatorship. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. Pro Football Government, powered by Davis Law Firm. Cowboys fans, you're ready for some football. Dallas hosting the rival Philadelphia Eagles on Monday Night Football. Dallas and Philly both sitting at 1-1 one and one on the season. Winner will take over. First place in the NFC East should be a good one. Kickoff set for 7-15 tonight. Meanwhile, Texans fans will have to wait till Sunday to see their squad play again. They'll be on the road taking on the 2-1 on Buffalo Bills. Texans currently sitting at 1-2. and two. Second place in the AFC South. Kickoff for this one set for Sunday at noon. And time now is 624 and about 67 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, new details on a deadly rollover crash on the south side of town. We're going to have those details. And outside with TransGuide right now, looking at uh, building traffic at 35 at uh, Highway 46. Also at I-10 out there at Camp Bullis says South Texas is waiting for the sun to come up on an early Monday morning. And we are learning more about a horrific train crash on Montana in Montana over the weekend. At least three people killed. We're going to have the latest. Outside with live cam, the weather here this weekend was just about perfect for fighting at football and morning coffee. Afternoons were beautiful as well. We we'll hope that trend continues. But Mike says rain is in the forecast this week. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, the 27th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's the best of both worlds. We had a great weekend and now we expect rain and we need some rain around here, but we don't need too much. And you said initially when the rain comes, It'll be a good thing. Yeah, because uh, it's so dry and we haven't had rain in it seems like forever. And so most everything's going to be soaking in once it starts. But the problem is um, that, you know, like we always say, it's either none or too much. And by the end of the week, we're going to be seeing in some cases too much rain. And so runoff is definitely going to be a problem. Maybe uh, flooding would be an issue toward later on in the week. More on that in a moment. First of all, got some clouds out there right now. Sun's not going to be coming up for about another hour or so. And temperature is at 67 degrees, which is pretty close to the average normal low. The dew point is up. We were down in the 40s at last week, late last week, 40s and 50s over the weekend, so it was very comfortable in the morning. Not that it's uncomfortable, but you just notice a little more humidity out there. Light breeze as of right now. Temperatures around the metropolitan area are pretty consistent. 70 right now, Stinson. Kelly, 66. Randolph at 64 degrees. And Ragby is on the moderate side, low amounts of mold and fall elm and we're going to have mostly cloudy skies just a little more humid this morning and then call it partly sunny uh, today 90 high temperature so a couple of degrees above normal nothing too extreme out there then tomorrow we're going to start to see a few showers and thunderstorms and they'll really start to pick up especially tomorrow night in through the rest of the week and going on into the weekend we'll still have some rain and we're going to have to watch out for a couple of uh, heavy downpours overall we're looking at a widespread you know a few inches of rain then we're going to have the heavier pockets on top of that we'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. What's going on, sir? Hey, good morning, Mike. People are going to want to check their vehicles before they get out there this morning. We're about half an hour away from that morning rush, and although things are shaping up here, this trans guide shots to show that uh, not many issues out on the roadway stalls seem to be that trending problem, at least at this half hour. As we take a look right now, uh, this stall coming up here off I-10 eastbound at loop 1604. We see another stall as we jump around on the map reported right here off I-35 southbound at George C. Beach Avenue. That one is still out there, guys, so make sure that you are driving carefully. 
carefully and we have another so it's causing a little bit of a buildup in those northbound lanes of 410 right at Culebra Road doesn't stop there. We do have another one right off I 35 northbound at Von Ormy Road at the exit there. So as you zoom out of the map, yeah, it's still pretty green on the screen, but we do have a lot of those stalls. So again, make sure you are checking those vehicles so that they're working properly because that seems to be the trending issue at this half hour. Uh, but right now these inbound times are almost green across the board. We do have a little bit, a little bit of a slowdown there on 87 coming in from Lavernia with 24 minutes. That tends to usually get yellow around this time as more people get out on the roadways. But as we bring you to trans guide one last time showing you around town 35 at Florida Street, we're not seeing a lot of issues out there this morning. Again, those stalled vehicles seem to be the big problem, so make sure things are working properly before you get on the roadways. Mark Stephanie. Stephen, thank you so much. Let's get to our top story. San Antonio police have a picture. Now they want a name. They're trying to track down a suspect in a recent robbery and they need help. Katrina Weber is live near downtown with more on this Crime Stoppers case. And Katrina, we understand this robbery happened at a local mall. Yes, good morning. Uh, this happened at Macy's at Ingram Park Mall earlier this month. And the way police describe it, it sounds like it started as a theft but then accelerated. Now, they have released photos of the man who they say was involved in that robbery, the suspect in this case. It happened September 14th at Macy's at Ingram Park Mall. Police say the man in the photos went into the store, stole some items, and then threatened a worker there. He got away, but it seems he left his image on surveillance cameras. Investigators released those photos in the hope that someone might recognize this man. Uh, anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers, and there could be a reward involved for the right tips. The number to call is 210-224-STOP or 224-7867. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. We now know the name of a man killed in a crash over the weekend. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office identifying him as 26-year-old Bruce Jimenez. Happened early Saturday morning at the Alamo Square Shopping Center at 35 and South Cross. Police say Jimenez lost control of his vehicle, hit a tree, and rolled over into the shopping center. He died at the scene. While the crash is, uh, the cause of the crash rather is unclear, police say alcohol was not a factor. And one man is in jail in connection to a bank robbery. Police say 33-year-old Raul Sandoval was taken into custody, suspected of robbing a bank off of Louis Pasteur Drive in the medical center area on Friday. He was found the same day with what police believe is evidence from that robbery. His bond has been set at $60,000. The San Antonio Fire Department and San Antonio Park Police mourning the loss of two first responders who passed away due to complications of the coronavirus. The Park Police announced on Facebook Officer Jay Pena died yesterday from COVID. Officer Pena joined the department back in 2012 and was assigned to the core unit. In their post, the department said Officer Pena served the citizens of San Antonio with dignity and was an asset to the department. Their post went on to say he will be deeply missed and their thoughts and prayers are with his family and his friends. And the San Antonio Fire Department confirmed active duty fire engineer Joseph M. Fonts also died yesterday from COVID-19 complications. He has been with the department since 1989 and most recently worked in the fire training division. Funeral arrangements are pending. Across the country, it's clear the Delta variant is not done. Over the next few weeks, health experts expect new cases of COVID to go up again, hitting different regions at a time. But experts say the surge could trend downward soon. But I think by Thanksgiving, you'll have seen this move its way through the country. The virus isn't going away, but prevalence levels will decline to a level that feels more manageable. Across the country, we were seeing a seven-day average of up to 160,000 cases a day at the peak of the surge. Right now, the CDC is at says that average is closer to 114,000 new cases a day. Some health experts expect will eventually drop down to about 20,000 a day, but getting there depends on more people getting vaccinated. Top of your morning headlines in Greece. One person is dead. Several others hurt following a 5.8 magnitude earthquake near Athens. It happened just a few hours ago. Here's a look at some of the images from the Greek island of Crete. Several homes and churches were damaged. The quake also caused some rock slides in the area. At least nine aftershocks have been reported, adding to the overall damage. An update to the deadly Amtrak train derailment in Montana. One of three people killed in the crash has been identified. The train was carrying 146 passengers Saturday when nearly all of its cars derailed. ABC's Rena Roy has more. 
Overnight, the first of three victims identified in that deadly Amtrak train derailment in Montana. Zack Schneider's wife, Becca, confirming to ABC News that her husband was killed when the Empire Builder passenger train went off the rails on Saturday. Oh my God, it's on its side. My first thought was that we were derailing. And then I thought that was crazy. There was no way that we could possibly be derailing. That's insane. The train headed from Chicago to Seattle with more than 150 people on board when it took a deadly turn near the town of Joplin. Eight of the train's 10 cars derailing, several toppling to their sides in this remote area. Oh, the train's destroyed down there. Right? First responders quickly arriving on the scene while passengers jumped into action to help rescue people trapped in the wreckage. About 120, 130 yards behind us uh, was where the rest of the train was. Daniel Hutchinson and his son helping free multiple people after rocks and rubble blocked the escape route. One gentleman was able to finally crawl out from under, uh, out of the gravel. We helped him up a ladder, up out of the car, and then down a ladder, down onto the ground. to uh, waiting assistance down there. And now we're learning more about the upkeep of the track where the train crashed. Officials revealing Sunday that section of the track was inspected less than a week ago. This morning, the NTSB is on scene, ready to examine potential causes for the crash. Amtrak releasing a statement in the wake of the accident, saying they are cooperating with investigators, adding, we share the sense of urgency to understand why the accident happened. However, until the investigation is complete, we will not comment further on the accident itself. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. In your morning consumer news, United Airlines now facing nearly $2 million in fines for violating its rules on leaving delayed planes full of passengers on the tarmac for too long. The Transportation Department says the fine is based on 25 flights between 2015 and 2021. It's the biggest fine ever for these kinds of violations. A corporate buyout boom is sweeping Wall Street. Companies so far this year have issued $120 billion of leveraged loans to finance buyouts. And the Wall Street Journal says that's just below the pace set in 2007 before the big financial crisis. The tech community in the San Antonio area continues to grow. Dax Moreno, organizer of SA Startup Week, joined us on Leading SA this weekend to discuss what the future of startups look like in the Alamo City. Always a great conversation with Dax, talking about the excitement, all the energy surrounding the technology sector right here in the Alamo City, the perpetual growth and the new opportunities for our community. We talked about a lot. We talked about what makes San Antonio so competitive and unique. We talked about growing during this pandemic. We also talked about what the future holds. Take a listen. What we're really hoping to do this year is uh, just invite more folks in. Come check out what's going on with startups. And it's not just about a huge focus on tech startups. We have a lot of people who are building products, consumer goods that are coming out. Uh, We're attracting some uh, folks from Austin and other places that are going to be coming in. You can find our full conversation right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Then join us this coming Wednesday, 2 p.m. We're going to have our technology town hall. We're going to have a live conversation about startups and the exciting future of San Antonio. Guys, back to you. And just a reminder, we are nearing the end of Hunger Action Month, and you still have time to help. You can drop off donations at Randolph Brooks Federal Credit Union locations. They are accepting non-perishables. And we have more information about how you can help on our website at kset.com. Right now, it's 640, about 67 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, soda versus diet soda. We're going to tell you which one experts say is the better choice. And welcome back. It's 643. Are you a Coca-Cola person or do you just go for the Diet Coke? I nodded to both. The lesser calorie beverage is the better choice, right? Well, the science is in and the results may surprise you. Sarah Costa explains which is better for your body and your brain. (sighs) Nothing beats the crisp taste of a soda. But what if the bubbly drink had zero calories and zero sugar? Do you know which is better for you? Uh, I'm diet, but he's regular. Yeah, Uh, regular soda. (laughs) You go from 200 calories to no calories. However, there's been some information that shows that actually making that switch doesn't help as much as you think it should. A study by the American Geriatric Society found that diet soda intake was related to increasing abdominal obesity. Also, artificial sweeteners, which are also found in diet soda, were linked to an increase of high calorie food. 
Something about your brain chemistry recognizes that there's something sweet because of the artificial sweeteners in the soda, and that might actually dial up your craving for more sweets. Researchers from Columbia University and University of Miami found those who consumed diet soda had a 43% higher chance of developing cardiovascular disease than those who drank regular soda, and those who drank as little as one diet beverage a day were three times more likely to develop dementia and had an increased risk for stroke over a 10-year period. Just something to think about before you pop open your next drink. And we all know sodas lead to obesity, which is a pretty common health condition here in San Antonio. According to the CDC, a little over 65% of adults in Bear County are overweight or obese. San Antonio is also ranked at number 17 on the list of fattest cities in America. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Back to you guys. I don't know about you, but my doctor said dump the soda. And the only way I was able to break it, because I like drinking fizzy drinks, yes. I drink like H-E-B sparkling water. Yes, that helps. Without anything added to it. So because yes, that can be zero calories and that's exactly. a very so good Exactly, so like thing. the plain one or maybe the lime version yes. and, and they're, they sell out a lot, so I think I'm, I'm not the only one doing it. <laughs> yeah, I kind of do that as well. Yeah. It's a good idea. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos at 6.45 right now. Yeah, I, I try to stick to the coffee. Just just coffee, well, nothing in go. it. Dark roast, that's the way I like it if I need that caffeine intake. But uh, if you're going to be heading out the door to grab that cup of coffee, we do have good news. The roads are shaping up to look nice. Uh, it's been the trending uh, thing all morning long, which what we like to see. US 90 at Medio Creek showed a little bit of a busier commute. 281 at San Pedro. Things are getting moving, but uh, we are seeing st things stopping for others. Uh, we do have a stall that just looks like it cleared, though, from I-10 eastbound at loop 1604. Uh, so that's some good news there. Those drivers may have received some assistance because a lot of those stalls that we saw have since cleared out. However, there is one crash that was detected right there off military drive at Boswell Street. It was causing a little bit of a buildup there on military, but thankfully it looks like things are now pretty green as we take a wider look at the map. Uh, that still has been the dominant color all morning long, although we are seeing a little bit of a buildup there along 1604. That's typically a construction spot, and we know that traffic starts to pick uh, starts to pick up around this hour. So a uh, good time to grab that cup of coffee and a good time to head to the gas station one last time. These AAA gas prices, uh, according to AAA, the average gas price in Bear County, 271 around the state. We are looking at 282. The national average 318 went down a penny. AAA did report last week that that number did stabilize. Uh, thankful as we see those recovery efforts following hurricanes Ida and Nicholas. But let's go ahead and take one last look at Transguide. It's shaping up to be a nice morning. Good time to grab that cup of coffee once again, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Good idea. Speaking of nice mornings, this picture from over the weekend. Wow. It's very nice. That almost doesn't look real. It's so orange on there. But yeah, from Pearsall Park, looking at it. Uh, gorgeous out there. This morning, another nice looking sunrise. We've got still a few clouds hanging around here this morning, and we're going to have a few more throughout the rest of today. But uh, yeah, very nice looking start. We've got this low out there to the west of us. This is water vapor imagery. And almost at times looks like an x-ray, if you will, of the atmosphere because you can really make out some of these uh, these systems very well. And as you can see, a good spin to that thing. It is going to be sliding kind of up to the northeast, but around that counterclockwise rotation, it is going to be pulling in and is pulling in a lot of energy, a lot of, uh, a lot of showers going to be moving on in here as well as a few thunderstorms, but it'll take a, a little bit. So today we're really not going to be seeing anything as far as any rain around here, just a lot of clouds. Now tomorrow we will start to see more showers move into the area. And again, broad brush, computer model, so it's not going to be raining everywhere. But what you can take away from this is the fact that as we go on in time tomorrow night, afternoon, and then especially uh, then overnight into Wednesday, we're going to start to see more of these showers and a few thunderstorms around here and maybe even a couple of heavier downpours thrown in as well. And that'll be the case in through Thursday, uh, Friday as well. And a couple of models do have some pockets of heavier rain even into the evening hours of Friday and that's as of right now we'll keep monitoring the situation things can change between now and then but also even into the weekend uh, Saturday Sunday and even a few leftover showers into Monday so it's one of those situations where the overall pattern is not going to be changing so it is kind of reminiscent of what we had what back in July and then back in May when we had those stretches, long stretches, what a week, maybe 10 days of rain, and potentially that's what we're looking at right now. As far as rainfall totals, widespread about one to three inches worth, and the majority of that 
It looks like it is going to be in portions of the hill country. And then this doesn't take into account the fact that there's going to be some heavier downpours on top of that. Also, as we start off with the ground so dry from all of the the, the lack of rain, I should say, all the dry weather we've been having around here, most of the rain is going to be soaking in fairly quickly. But then as the ground gets saturated and you get those heavier downpours, that's what we're going to have to watch out for, especially later on in the week. Some runoff potentially flooding 85 degrees at noon, 90 high temperature, just a couple of degrees above normal. Humidity is going to be OK today, but definitely humidity is going to be going back up and there's going to be a lot of moisture in the atmosphere to get squeezed out. And especially tomorrow night, you know, a couple of showers, thunderstorms in the afternoon, but tomorrow night, then in through the end of the week and, and even the weekend. And again, there's going to be those pockets of some heavy rain mixed in as well. I'm having visions of us getting drenched this week. I Absolutely think you're drenched. Right. Some folks will get mm -hmm. will get drenched at times. So mm -hmm. and again, starting off, it's going to be OK. But then once things get saturated, then we got to have to watch out. And Mike was saying earlier, plan ahead for Thursday and Friday night football. Going to be on the sloppy side. Mm, yeah, it's looking like it right now. All right, we'll be prepared. Thanks, Mike. 650, about 67 degrees. And a new warning about the ingredients in your makeup. We're going to tell you what some experts are saying about it tomorrow on GMSA. Outside with live cam. We're going to wrap up the newscast right now. A pretty look at your uh, Monday morning sunrise. You are watching GMSA. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA with that vaccine mandate for some states approaching and booster shots now rolling out. CDC Director Rochelle Walensky is going to join us live to break it all down. You'll see that and so much more right here on GMA. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center provides blood used in emergencies for 48 counties and over 100 hospitals and clinics in our region. However, supplies continue to be very low. That's why KSAT and their community partners have teamed up to get more donors, especially with type O blood. One donation can save up to three lives and keep the blood bank adequately stocked, but there need to be at least 600 donors a day. If you'd like to donate, you can make an appointment at universityhealthsystem.com or call 210-358-2812. And the time now is 6.55. Time to check in with Stephen Cavazos for our look at the roads. Good morning and happy Monday. As we take a look right now, these shots at Transguy do show that we have a few more folks getting their morning started early. As you can see right now, traffic is starting to build up, uh, starting to see some hot spots on the map where we're seeing that congestion build. But I uh, just want you to keep in mind that we do have that crash still out there of Military Drive right there along Boswell Street. Uh, but as we zoom out, though, it's starting to get a little bit colorful again, traffic building in certain hot spots. But one last look here at these inbound times. Thankfully, they're still green across the board. If you're traveling to San Antonio in the next few moments, with the exception of Bulverde, 28 minutes right now, Mike, but it looks like things are getting pretty busy. Not too bad, and things are going to be getting busy weather-wise later on in the week. Not bad right now. As you can see, we've got a few clouds hanging around here. Temperature is at 67 degrees, 61 Comfort, 70 Canyon Lake. And throughout the rest of today, we are going to have, call it um, partly sunny skies, kind of a mixture of sunshine and clouds at times. 85 at noon, 90 high temperature. No rain today. We'll start to see a few more showers and a couple of uh, thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon, then especially tomorrow night through the end of the week and the weekend. It won't be raining constantly, but we've got good chance for showers and storms, maybe a couple of uh, heavier downpours mixed in as well. All right, we'll be prepared all week. Let us know at some point if we need <laughs> to build an arc. No, nah, I don't think so. Okay. No, not this week. Good okay. news. <laughs> Have a great day, guys. Robo. No. <laughs> <laughs>